Hello everyone. So this is going to be a slightly different sort of video. Here I'm not going to discuss any academic matters, rather I'm going to discuss something very close to my heart about using Linux. Now, if you're a student from computer science, mathematics, physics, or even electronics and electrical, it is most likely that you are going to end up using Linux at one point or another. There is a definite culture among the senior students and even among the professors there in those departments of using Linux and this culture kind of brushes off on the young students and the culture propagates in this way. But if you're a student from other departments, for example, mechanical, civil, aerospace, chemical and so on, uh, this culture doesn't really exist. So uh, the, uh, the senior students and the professors mostly use Windows, some fashionable ones may be using Mac, but hardly anyone uses Linux. At least that is the general perception because there are people who use Linux even in those departments. They actually need to use Linux. So if you're a student and you are suffering from this general misperception uh, that people are not using Linux, so uh, should you be using Linux? Because it is very hard nowadays as a modern student to be on the internet, to be a citizen of the internet and not come across videos and content where people discuss about the cool things that you can possibly do with Linux. So you may be in a sort of dilemma whether you should go for this, this new, this new thing, this Linux, uh, uh, whether it's the right choice for you because apparently there does not seem to be much incentive if you're a student from these departments, these non-circuital branches or maths and physics. So through this video, I hope to dispel some of the misconceptions and discuss to you uh, in a very open and candid fashion some of the advantages and disadvantages of using Linux. So to see, I'm not trying to be an evangelist here. There are people like Linux evangelists who have taken upon them like a holy mission of converting all Windows users to Linux. I'm not one of those guys. I'll just state to you the bare facts as they are. You decide for yourself whether you want to try it or not. All right. Uh, my, just my, my only wish is that you take an informed decision about it. All right, so this video I'll divide into two parts. In the first part, I'm going to try to dis dispel some misconceptions. I'll try to address some of the possible doubts and maybe highlight some of the advantages, the direct advantages of using Linux. And then uh, keeping in mind that uh, I'm making this video especially for students from mechanical, civil aerospace, like the non circuital branches or maths and physics, uh, and perhaps even also if you're a student from those branches and maybe on, in two minds about using Linux, I'll try to state some of the things which uh, you need to do officially when you're using computers as you're sitting in those departments uh, and try to discuss with you whether by using Linux you can do those things, whether uh, Linux actually hinders you or helps you in doing those things, some of the official things that you're supposed to do. So here we go. So why should you even consider using Linux? Okay, what is the point of it? So uh, instead of discussing in terms of technicalities, let me share with you my own experience. So if you are a computer user, maybe you have been using uh, Windows, uh, perhaps uh, the oldest version of Windows that you've used is Windows 8, most likely currently you are using Windows 10 or Windows 11. Now, since I'm an old timer, relatively old timer, I've been using Windows uh, since Windows 98, I think I saw Windows 95, but I did not ever touch it. Uh, Windows 98 definitely, but properly I started using computers only using Windows XP. So that was during my undergraduate days. And then during my PhD, I used uh, Windows 7. And then as I was finishing up my PhD, Windows 8 came. So during my postdoc, I had that on my laptop, Windows 8, maybe it was Windows 8.1. And when I started my job as an assistant professor here at in the mechanical engineering department of IIT Kharagpur, that was what I had. Okay, and then uh, I bought a new laptop, it had Windows 10. My experience is that, at least starting from Windows 8, there is an inevitable degradation in the Windows and in the user experience when using Windows. Like this kind of thing did not used to happen when I was using Windows XP and Windows 7. Those were actually quite good operating systems. I never actually used Windows Vista and those other uh, not so good versions. I definitely use Windows XP and Windows 7 and these kinds of degradations in user experience over the years that did not used to happen. But for Windows 8, starting from Windows 8, Windows 10, it has definitely happened. Like uh, I have a new computer, I have this Windows version and then within a period of three to four years, the computer slows down, 
Now, please trust me when I say this, I am past that age where I randomly uh, install softwares from here and there from shady websites or games from shady websites that I will be uh, indiscriminately uh, uh, installing malware into my system. Okay, so why is this kind of a degradation happening? So that was beyond me. Now in the same computer, this new laptop that I had brought, I think it was in 2017 and which had incredibly slowed down out of its own as I was using Windows 10 on it by 2020, when I installed uh, Linux on it, it suddenly came back to life. Like uh, it did not become blazingly fast and nothing magical like that happened, but it kind of went back to its normal performance as I had experienced it when it was new. So see, there was nothing wrong with the hardware. So while, why when I was using Windows, that kind of degradation happened? That is beyond me, okay? Uh, so this is, this is my user experience. So my feeling is that these new versions of Windows, they are doing something, uh, well, either uh, deliberately or uh, I don't know what they are doing, but this kind of degradation is happening. And this is probably going to happen more and more uh, and because they are trying to do some kind of lockings uh, and uh, telemetry. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of issues, okay. Now, the next point that I want to dispel is that uh, among many Win Windows users, there's a notion that Linux is only for professional programmers or hackers, okay. So this is like patently untrue, okay. You should not have any such notion. And there's also this notion that if you have to use Linux, then you have to open up this, this, uh, this strange black terminal or command line. And the only things that you can do in Linux is using that command line. Okay, it is absolutely not true. Maybe it was true maybe 25, 30 years ago, but that is not the case. Like current versions of Linux, and there are many, many of them, you have, you're picking from them. You can pick whatever you want. Uh, so many different options, like you're spoiled for choice. And many of them, have beautiful graphical user interfaces, probably much better than Windows. Okay, so that is absolutely not a reason to not pick uh, Linux, okay? Uh, you can absolutely go by using Linux without ever opening up the command prompt or the terminal. Okay, that is absolutely possible. Uh, the next thing is that, uh, see, suppose suppose you, you use computers over four or five years, okay, and you are, you are investing some time and effort over using uh, this computer with Windows on it, what is the return of investment? Are you learning anything new as the days go by or are you doing the same exact same things over and over again? Okay, so you are, you're never becoming a power user, so to speak. Maybe you learn a few keystrokes, uh, keyboard shortcuts, but beyond that, uh, what are you doing exactly? So, Will it perhaps not be a better idea for you to start using something, Linux, where as you invest a little bit more effort and time, you actually learn some proper technical savviness. And uh, mind you, if you use this thing, then in your CV, you can actually write down, you can actually write down that you know Linux and that carries a lot of weight, especially if you're not from the circuital branches. Okay, that, that shows that you have some kind of incentive and ability to do some kind of technical adventure on your own. All right, the other thing is that, uh, well, the obvious thing is that Linux is completely free, like literally officially free. Now this I'm saying as an advantage, many people think that's because something is free, maybe it is like a cheap thing. Okay, so there's a difference between free and cheap, okay. Uh, so so please do appreciate that a lot of effort from brilliant engineers and computer scientists from across the world have gone into making Linux. Like Linux is a com community driven uh, kind of uh, operating system. Uh, so uh, it, just because it is free doesn't mean that it is of poor quality. Okay, there is uh, like a tremendous amount of technical brilliance embedded into it. Uh, and of believe it or not there is a lot of electronic appliances all around you which you use on a daily basis where the back end of the software part is actually based on linux okay in fact uh, our smartphones the android smartphones the uh, i mean the operating system is based off linux uh, another definite advantage is that linux is completely virus free uh, well you take that with a grain of salt because uh, you should not think that it is completely free from any sort of security vulnerabilities. It's not like that. 
but compared to windows it is like orders of magnitude better okay like if there is a security vulnerability in linux it is actually newsworthy it will come in the news but it is such a daily occurrence in windows that is not even newsworthy all right so these are some of the broad strokes kind of advantages uh, i wanted to highlight uh, to you so you see there is uh, there are points in favor of considering linux okay so these are the these are some of the facts that i have told you uh, okay by the way another thing is that uh, in terms of customization okay so if you're using a tool over time uh, you will have a general tendency especially as a technical person to customize it to your own requirements and needs now uh, all of you actually do this even when using windows you change the desktop wallpaper uh, you change the themes and the the fonts and whatever so why stop at those cosmetic things when you can do so much more and uh, linux gives you complete freedom to make it as you want it to be okay so the more you use it the more ideas you get to tune it to your own uh, uh, capabilities and to your own needs to your own workflow styles you can actually do it so there's an entire world out there where you can use window managers and things like that let's not get into that but uh, trust me on this that uh, you can properly customize this according to your will okay so this was the first part of the discussion the next part is where i want to actually highlight to you the kind of things where linux can uh, actually help you perhaps even hinder you uh, in doing your official needs or your official businesses okay so so as a student what do you need so starting from the first year of your engineering uh, or science maybe you will need to learn a little bit of programming uh, as part of your programming and maybe data structures classes uh, so that's the part of the common curriculum uh, all engineering institutes have that uh, and that you can very well do in windows or linux uh, so it will be absolutely uh, be uh, lying on my part if i if i said that you can do that only on linux certainly not okay you can very well do programming in windows and linux both uh, and for those kinds of basic uh, programming needs uh, you certainly don't need the massive uh, uh, the massive advantages that linux actually provides and this is true like if you're a professional programmer then certainly linux does offer you massive advantages but in your first you certainly don't need that so I just wanted to highlight that yes in linux also you have these things uh, and if you are interested even from your first year in programming then linux certainly is the right way to go uh, next is uh, engineering drawing and computer graphics so this is something which is very much an integral part of mechanical uh, civil aerospace uh, naval architecture perhaps even chemical i'm not sure but uh, it, it is very much an important part okay so of course in first year every, every department students has to learn these things but as you go uh, go along in the in the higher classes and in the higher years uh, the students from these departments have to do further courses in these areas also now in so this is a, a contentious issue in the sense that the industry standard in engineering drawing and computer graphics nowadays uh, arguably is solid works now SOLIDWORKS is made by a company which simply does not care about Linux. So they do, they do not actually make installers for SOLIDWORKS to be installed on Linux. Now this seems to be directly an argument for not ever using Linux by students from mechanical aerospace and these are the departments, civil and etc. But pause for a moment, okay. SOLIDWORKS is an expensive piece of software and uh, not every institute can afford it so there are institutes where people use free and open source alternatives to solidworks they do exist for example you have freecad librecad uh, these kinds of softwares these are definitely good they're not as good as solidworks i won't lie to you okay like nothing is as good as solidworks it is really really good is there's a reason why it is the industry standard so if if as a as a uh, as is as a stu as an engineering student you are progressing through your years and you are developing some kind of a professional interest like interest to go into the profession of solid uh, solids modeling and engineering drawing and computer graphics and all those things then maybe don't i mean stay with windows okay this is my personal advice to you okay i told you that i'm not going to be a linux evangelist so if that is what you want to do stay with windows uh, 
and that's the industry standard learn it properly because why would you waste your time learning something which you're not going to ultimately use professionally but at the same time if your professor in an institute is teaching to you is teaching you using FreeCAD or LibreCAD then don't go about using SOLIDWORKS uh, through some other means okay uh, you know what I'm talking about use those uh, alternatives and maybe later on uh, as time comes use SOLIDWORKS I mean if it is actually necessary at the same time I have said that like SOLIDWORKS is the industry standard but because it is a proprietary software it is completely logged in okay like you will you'll not be able to see the source code of it so if you are so much interested in solids modeling and computer graphics that you actually end up doing research in this area then paradoxically it makes sense for you to actually go with those free and open source versions like FreeCAD, LibreCAD or maybe some other kinds of like there are numerous other CAD softwares uh, free and open source where you can actually tinker with the code uh, depending on the research direction that you are pursuing you can actually uh, play around with the code change things here and there things you cannot do in SOLIDWORKS okay so decide for yourself what you want to do uh, next mathematical packages so again uh, MATLAB and Mathematica are of course uh, very professional softwares they're they're beautiful softwares uh, but at the same time they are expensive okay but the good thing is that unlike SOLIDWORKS both Math MATLAB and Mathematica come with installers for Linux like you can properly install uh, MATLAB and Mathematica in Linux without any intermediate software like Wine or Bottles or anything like that okay you can natively install them properly in Linux I have myself used MATLAB during my postdoc uh, uh, in Linux in Ubuntu uh, and it's definitely and math mathematica is also there okay and if you want to go for some kind of open source alternative to it uh, within the python environment you have symbolic python numpy and whatnot and then you also have octave uh, so uh, so alternatives do exist okay but see uh, me mentioning uh, these alternatives doesn't mean that they're only available for linux okay they're available for windows also so you decide for yourself what you want to do next uh, a very important part of your training as a mechanical engineer, civil engineer, aerospace engineer will be learning finite element packages. So the the leaders in this are definitely uh, yeah, well. It's a, it's a uh, kind of a personal opinion, but I think uh, many people will agree with me that the leaders are ANSYS, uh, Abacus, and to a large extent, uh, Comsol also Comsol Multiphysics. Okay, so here in our department. Many of the PhD students use these softwares on a daily basis uh, and I'm sure in other institutes also this will be the same kind of situation. So uh, and the good news is that ANSYS, Abacus, Comsol, they are all natively installable in Linux. Okay and I want to highlight something here that I am also not a free and open source evangelist. Okay there are some fanatics who will swear by free and open source they will not touch anything proprietary I'm not like that my philosophy is that use the best tool for the job okay use the best tool for the job always so if your job requires you to use MATLAB or to use Abacus or to use Comsol use that okay don't get hung up on this free and open source uh, uh, of like philosophy okay philosophy will come later okay first do your job properly which is not to say that I, I don't support free and open source. I definitely support I, wherever possible. If nobody is dictating terms to me, I will first try to use a free and open source uh, thing. So all my YouTube videos here are made using free and open source softwares. Uh, uh, all the video editing and, uh, and the thumbnails and everything. And uh, uh, for other things also, I try as, as far as possible to use free and open source. But I'm not getting hung up on those things. So I think it's, it's not a good philosophy to get hung up on those things. Okay, uh, uh, stay, so coming back to finite element packages, you definitely have ANSYS, Abacus, Comsol that can be absolutely be installable in Linux. So there is, so Linux will not hinder you from learning these packages. Okay, uh, on the contrary, if you are actually interested in the long term on high performance computing, which is like the serious level research uh, kind of thing in these areas, then learning Linux will actually be a, a great advantage to you 
like you'll get a definite head start if you learn start learning Linux from your undergraduate days only. By the time you become a PhD student, uh, you'll have a tremendous head start over many of the other uh, research scholars, over the other PhD candidates. Okay, so in high performance computing, Linux is the way to go. Um, the way that you can handle servers uh, and uh, high-end clusters and high-end uh, machines, uh, computational machines are mostly using Linux. Okay, so there's a definite uh, argument to be made uh, for the for the use of Linux in these areas. Okay. Next, uh, again, staying on this topic of fine element packages, uh, there is one very professional level of fine element package where the mathematical background is very very robust uh, because. Uh, proper mathematicians have developed it, have, have worked with computer science scientists to develop this and it's called Phoenix. It's a relatively newer package but Phoenix, uh, believe it or not, is actually more easily installable in Linux. It is possible to install it in Windows but it's a massive pain. I mean, you can use it, uh, I mean, uh, you, can, you can install it using something called Docker but then Docker doesn't get installed on Windows Home Edition. Uh, so there's a whole litany of issues. It's, it's a breeze to install it in Linux. So if you are more mathematically minded and maybe going for some kind of uh, Phoenix package or some other kind of open source package, then staying on Linux does make sense. Okay, next, the elephant in the room. Uh, so when people are migrating from Windows to Linux, the first question they, they inevitably have is that, uh, Will I get MS Office? Will I get, get MS Word, Microsoft Word in Linux? Well, you can have through the use of Wine or uh, such other intermediate softwares, but uh, that would not be an ideal solution, okay? There are alternatives to it. And please note that the .docx uh, extension, those, those files with the .docx uh, uh, extension, that is not something which can be created only using Microsoft Word, okay? That can very well be created with using other softwares. For example, you have the widely used LibreOffice, which is an excellent piece of software. Uh, you can actually have proper mathematical equations, including uh, LaTeX input within uh, LibreOffice Writer. Okay, I've tried it out myself. It's, it's an extension. It, it can, it's a breeze to install it. You can install it within two minutes. Uh, the, the latex uh, extension okay so you don't have to get hung up on ms word and uh, often times the the argument that is put forward against LibreOffice is that a document which is created in ms word maybe there's a lot of indentation and formatting it doesn't get reflected properly in LibreOffice. i agree okay so some of those doc uh, formatting and uh, styles and uh, various other things which you create in MS Word doesn't get reflected properly in LibreOffice. But if you're collaborating with someone, I have noticed that students nowadays, what they do is they don't go for either MS Office or LibreOffice. They just go for something like Google Docs, okay, because it makes collaboration that much easy. So if you're collaborating with someone, go for Google Docs, okay. So, and if you're using it, uh, if you're uh, using, or if you're trying to create a document on your own, just the output matters like you want to print out a report or you want to just make a PDF out of it then just use LibreOffice what's stopping you okay and finally graphics uh, well uh, I won't lie to you now uh, Adobe Photoshop uh, and Adobe Illustrator they are really really good okay like if you are a professional graphics artist those are the things uh, uh, that you that you probably need to use uh, and, uh, like uh, in industry but let's go back to the original motivation of this discussion okay I'm talking I'm, I'm making this video especially for students for mechanical engineering aerospace uh, students maybe for some uh, circuital branch students also who are on the fence about using Linux for you guys uh, I can uh, I can envisage no situation where you would do something so very uh, like terribly fantastic that you'd actually need the professional versions of these uh, Adobe packages, uh, Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so whatever you, you need to do really, okay, whatever you really need to do using Photoshop, you can very well do it using GIMP, the free and open source uh, uh, graphics package or for scalable vector graphics, 
instead of Adobe Illustrator, you can use Inkscape. Okay, and Inkscape has actually improved tremendously. I've been use, using Inkscape for like more than 12 years now. And in almost all my papers, not almost all, in all my papers, uh, like the actual journal papers, which is uh, from my research work, every schematic figure has been created using Inkscape. Okay, so these are like professional publication level uh, figures. Nothing too fancy, I don't need that. Whatever I need, I can create using Inkscape. Okay, so this is the situation. I've laid bare in front of you all the facts, the truth as it is. Uh, you decide for yourself what you want to do. Like if I have to summarize everything, unless you actually want to become a professional, uh, like a solid works guy, okay, there is no reason for you to shy away from Linux. This is my personal feeling. And now you decide. Okay, all the best.